Hey guys, so I'm going to be preaching tonight, but before I do that, I just want to say a quick little prayer. Um, I've been praying for myself and my nervousness all day, but I want to pray for whoever may be watching this video. So, I'm going to close my eyes. All right. Hey God, <laughs> I just want to pray over whoever's watching this video on whatever device, iPad, iPhone, Android, computer, any other device that I didn't mention, just whoever's watching this video, that my sermon will be able to resonate with them because... I don't know if resonate is a word I usually use, so I don't know why I just use that. But I pray that it will um, impact them beyond just hearing it and thinking like, oh, that was pretty good. I pray that it will make them want to take action in the direction towards you, that they will want to get closer to you and realize that it takes effort. Sometimes it takes discipline. Sometimes it's hard. Sometimes it's painful. Sometimes it's confusing. Sometimes you don't really feel anything and you're just like, why am I still trying? But I pray that this motivates them even on the days they don't feel like it to just keep striving towards you, God, because you are always wanting for us to reach out. Lift up our hand and say like, hey God, I need you. Um, this is what's going on in my life. To pray, to read the Bible, to take up habits that will motivate us towards our goal of connecting with you. God, whoever's watching this video, whatever struggles they may be having that might have nothing to do with my sermon at all, I just pray that they know throughout this prayer you love them, <laughs> God, that they are loved. Um, yeah, yeah, I just pray for whoever may be watching this video, the circumstance of their life, not just that my sermon would impact them, but that through other ways you would just reveal yourself to them. In your name I pray, amen. I didn't realize, like, I don't know if the video started off up here or, like, my arm is getting sore and it just kept gravitating, but I'm about to go preach now, so I will put the sermon for the rest of the video. Love you, Tori. Love you, Tori. What's the day? Nice so, yeah, my name is Tori. Nice. Tonight, we've been talking about habits these past couple of weeks, and I'm really excited about that because something you guys might not know about me is I really am bad at committing to habits to form goals. So I was just out of curiosity, like everyone in this room, who in here thinks that they can do something that I cannot do? Assuming that you don't know anything about me. Lots of hands are up. Wow, I'm feeling kind of bad. <laughs> Emma, what can you do that I cannot? Oh, I was a, um, <laughs> play volleyball. Play volleyball. Okay, so we've got a good basis. I'm not athletic. Accurate. Yeah, what's your name? Gavin. Gavin, what can you do that I cannot? Play what? Soccer. Soccer? Also true. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, Sayla. Talk by getting in trouble. You can, wait, what? Getting in trouble by talking. Getting in trouble. I can get in trouble by talking. Oh, I've definitely done that before. I wish Katie was here. Um, you guys know Katie Brandon. She can ride a unicycle. I cannot. Roger. I can grow a beard. You can grow a beard. Yeah. Emma, so you said volleyball? How much time in your life, random ballpark guests, do you think you have spent playing volleyball? A lot. Like a week? How long are your practices? Uh, I don't know. Taylor? About two hours. Yeah. Two hour practices a week. And you've been playing volleyball for how long? Three years. Yeah, three years. See, that's I commitment, not really my thing. You with soccer, Gavin? Have you ever felt like giving up going into playing soccer? No, because I really like it. No, because you really like it. See, I don't really like sports. I have thought about quitting. I have thought about quitting. <laughs> what keeps you motivated? What keeps you like going? Whenever it's kind of hard to quit once you're in sports. Like, yeah. and, and so for me, sports, not really my thing. There was a little amount of time that I was like, I think I'm going to try track because all you have to do is run, but I wasn't good at it, so I quit track. <laughs> thought I was going to try cheer, wasn't good at it, quit cheer. I'm very, like, if you guys would have saw my search history when I was younger, you would have made so much fun of me because I, like, there's a lot of tutorials for things, but I wanted the fast ones, like how to get a six-pack in, like, five minutes. How to grow my hair super long, literally, in my search history, promise. How to grow my hair longer overnight, how to like, I had really bad acne. How to get rid of my acne in like a day. So I had set so many goals that I just didn't, they weren't realistic. I didn't align things with them. So say I had, by some miracle, gotten abs in five minutes, which I did not. If that were to have happened, and then I gave up on that, then they would have just went away and the whole thing would have been pointless. So the first point that I'd like to make tonight, and you might not fall into this category, but I myself, I make goals that I don't like to necessarily work for. And I don't do that intentionally. I have just spent a lot of time relying on the feeling of motivation. And I've heard a lot of you guys as well be like, I just don't feel motivated. I don't really feel like doing this. I don't want to. I don't want to put in the effort. We don't like to say that we're 
lazy. We just don't, some people have a lot of motivation and we are not blessed with that gift. Well, I went to a conference. I don't like motivational speakers because I feel like I never take it. I hear it and then it goes out one ear. But I went to this huge Christian conference at Passion. If you guys know what that is, it's like there were 18 to 25 year olds and there were 70,000 of us around that in one room worshiping and it was an amazing experience. But this one of the speakers, he got up on stage and he said, So if you leave here and you say, man, I was so filled up, I was so encouraged, but you don't do anything with it, you've wasted so much of it. I almost think that Satan laughs. I almost think that he, he laughs when he sees us because he knows we're going to come, we're going to get fired up, and then we're going to leave unmotivated. We're going to not change any of the things that we took to heart. We use excuses a lot, like, um, I'm a work in progress, that's something that I have said, because it's true, like, we are all works in progress, we're never going to be perfect, whatever, but we like to say we're works in progress and not put in work for progress, and I think we approach our relationship with God like that a lot, like, I want to be close to God, but I don't want to put in the effort towards being close to God. If you have your Bibles with you, I would like for you to turn to the book of Hebrews, or if you have the Bible app on your phone, I'll excuse if you want to be on your phone for a couple seconds. We're going to be in Hebrews chapter 12, starting in verse 7. And so what the book of Hebrews is, is it's actually the letters that were written to Jewish Christians about um, keeping their faith, because they wanted to give up. And the way that their faith was, it wasn't like, I'm lazy, I'm unmotivated. They didn't want to be killed. Like, people were killing Christians. So they had a right motive to be like, I kind of want out of this. But what this book is, it's not saying discipline because you don't feel like it. It's saying when things are hard. Whenever you're in difficult times, God can use that as discipline. So starting in chapter 12, verse 7, it says, Endure hardships as discipline. God is treating you as children. For what children are not disciplined by their fathers? If you are not disciplined, and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate, not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. I'm going to pause right there because I was not respectful. <laughs> like, my mom, so when I hear discipline in this aspect, it's like how our parents discipline us is kind of how God disciplines us. And we, the idea of discipline sounds kind of like gross when you think your parents are disciplining you and teachers are trying to discipline you. Why would you want to discipline yourself? God disciplines us as well as when our parents discipline us. It's not just out of respect to our parents or to God, it's for others. Because when you're raising children, when your parents are raising you, when mine were raising me, um, it's not just out of respect towards them. When you raise disrespectful kids, they can become disrespectful adults to those who are around them. And so my mom, the way that she thought to discipline me, I like, you guys, I got so many spankings. Like, I don't know if that's a thing that parents still do or if that's considered, like, child abuse now. But <laughs> I got spanked, like, a lot. And it just stubborned me. I would look at my mom one time. I was like, that didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. And she, and then I was like, okay, like, that one didn't hurt either. And then there was another time she, I got my butt whooped. I said, you hate me. Like, I yelled at her and said, you hate me. Because I didn't understand her motive, like, she was trying to do it out of love, but she didn't understand that wasn't the best way to go about it with me, because it would just switch up how I acted towards her. So the next verse, I love how it words this, it says, they disciplined us for a little while, as they thought best. So my mom, she, she did that until she realized that wasn't really the way to get around to me, and then she started taking my phone, and I was grounded also a lot. So they disciplined us for a while as they thought best for them, but God disciplines us for our own good, in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. It doesn't say that discipline is easy. It says that sometimes it can be painful. And from my own experience, in case you guys are wondering why I look really strong, it was arm day today, and I hate arm day with a passion. Like, going in, working out at the gym, I would just skip every single arm day if that were a possibility for me. But I've tried to discipline myself and be like, okay, Tori, this is what's best for you. Does anyone in here know what discipline is? Like, 
by not by definition, but what is your when you hear discipline? Because when I hear that, it kind of freaks me out. Like I don't like the idea of discipline. If you do something wrong, you're not just gonna get away with it. You're gonna get some kind of punishment out of it. Mm -hmm. I always thought of discipline as restricting, like super restricting. This word, I'm gonna see if any of you can pronounce it. I feel like such a teacher right now, but okay. G y n n a d z o. <laughs> Anyone know what that word is? Who like pronounce this word? Does anyone want to take like a gander? What could this mean? What is this word? Like I kept looking up what does discipline mean? And what does it mean to be trained? Like what did all that come from? And so it took me to this Greek word and I was like, what is this? What this word means, it was a gymnasium that people used to exercise in naked. Take that in for a moment. Let's, like, what does that have to do with the word discipline? Oh, right? you spelt it wrong, but it's okay. Um, from that word that meant people used to exercise naked, I was like, what in the world? I don't know how that relates at all. And so reading a lot of stuff was like, stuff with Greek gods, all this randomness. But then towards the end of the passage, it said something about um, it's because they didn't want anything hindering them, like from their performance. So they would take their clothes off because they didn't want to be affected in any way by what that they knew they could accomplish. So discipline isn't just about forming good habits, but it's about dropping bad habits. And by definition, if we go off of this word and where it kind of came from, discipline is actually supposed to be freeing. So to form good habits, push us towards our goal, and whenever we have bad habits, it keeps us from our goal. I'm gonna pick on my mom just a little bit because she like she sets goals and then she forms these really bad habits. So she just can't get there. She like she wants to wake up early. She wants to clean the house and do all this. The other, okay, last Sunday she told me, like, she hit snooze for an hour. Not that there was an hour snooze button, but every single five minutes she would hit snooze for an entire hour. And she was like, I had so much stuff that I wanted to do. And she just couldn't accomplish that because she had gotten the routine of the bad habit of, like, just do this and hit snooze. If your goal in school is to get good grades but you don't want to study, like, I saw you in the back go, oh. <laughs> Some of you in this room don't have to study. I'm not the biggest fan of you because I like I just didn't have that. I would be sitting next to the person that was like, yeah, I'm gonna fail the test, and they would get a B, or that was their bad grade, so they'd be all sad about it, and I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, so that's one of you in this area. I would get, let's say, I'm like a C minus, and I'm like, I knew I could have done better, and then this person would be like, hey, but that's good. I'm like, you were just complaining, like, is that good for me? So I just start feeling all bad about myself. But my goal in school was seriously to just get good grades. I don't know what your goal in school is, but that's what I was told. Yeah, well, my goal was to get good grades. And so with that goal, it sounds good, but I think you can have a bad goal with good intention. So I wanted to get good grades. So I would study, 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 take the test, forget. Like, I promise you guys, I seriously, we might have teachers in the room, so I, I respect you guys, but I don't think I learned anything beyond the fourth grade that benefits me because I would take the test and forget absolutely everything. Like my goal in school, yeah, my goal in school was literally just to get a good grade. So then I didn't remember anything. And I wondered, like, what if I would have went into school with the idea, I wonder what I can actually learn. I wonder what I can take in that I can apply rather than just studying and doing all this and taking a test. And I think we approach God a lot like that if we don't know what our goal is. So what is our goal with God? Any guesses? It might be um, up on the yeah, board. <laughs> <laughs> to connect with God. Yeah, so if our goal is to connect with God, then we have to have an aim. Just a fun fact of the day about me. Another sport that I did for a short amount of time and gave up, gave up on with archery. And this was before I knew I needed glasses. So my aim was just like absolutely horrible. You can see the goal. Like it was super obvious. But I would like pull it back and then I think it was aligned, but then it would shoot past like the entire target because I couldn't see anything. So my aim was off. And I think when we approach God, like my goal is to read the Bible. A lot of um, you guys, we were talking about what our goal is, what habits we can form. And when some of you said to read the Bible. But if I read the Bible without aim and I'm not thinking like, what can I learn? What can I kind of take from this? Then I'm not going to get much out of it. So I think our goal that we should make, rather than to read the Bible, we should form a habit of trying to understand the Bible. Because eventually, like if you set the goal to read the Bible in a year, and you read it like this, like 
page by page by page, and then you close it, and you're like, I don't remember anything. I don't think God wants us to approach that in the same way that I did school, because that's exactly what I did for a very long time. So, if our goal is to connect with God, to understand Him, and to know Him, habits that we can form to reach that would be to read the Bible with intention. We can pray continually, pray to Him throughout the day, not just set aside the last few minutes of your night as you're falling asleep. I think a habit that we need to form in order to connect with God is to understand ourselves because I, like, the way you might connect with God might not be the way that I do at all. In order to have the things that will get you closer to God, you also have to know what keeps you from God. A lot of you in here, not trying to call you out, I love you, my middle school girls, but you said time. You didn't have time. And I said, pull out your phone and tell me what your weekly average was. One of you that said that, 11 hours a day on your phone. Hey, and she was the one that said that she had she the most amount of time. She's the one that uh-huh. made a yeah. point. I don't have the time. She's not here. She's oh. not here. She might be feeling convicted. We love her. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I have softball. I have so many things. And she pulls out her phone. Oh, 11 like, hours a day. I was like, did this girl No, sleep? it was almost 12. It was yeah. like 11.40. Mine was not, was not that bad. bad. Yours was good. I will give you that. Wait an hour. You could still get like 10 minutes to pray. To, you know what I mean? And I, we, I feel like we kind of have time for what we make time for. It's just a hard habit to get into. Another thing that keeps us from um, getting closer to God or putting in habits is lack of motivation. And so I kind of got into motivation earlier. But when I was talking to Luke about my idea for this sermon on habits, he asked what my title would be. And I said, motivation sucks and he like redirected me to a more appropriate level but when you rely on a feeling when you wait on motivation I get motivation at like the randomest times it's like 3 a.m and suddenly I'm like okay I'm gonna clean my room or most of the time I get motivation for tomorrow I'm like tomorrow I'm gonna be so productive tomorrow I'm gonna clean my room I'm gonna like study, I'm going to just do all of these things, and then tomorrow comes, and I'm like, I was feeling more motivated for that yesterday. Tomorrow, I'll feel more motivated for this. So time, motivation, confusion, it's really hard, like I said earlier, to kind of try and understand the Bible when you don't know the meaning of it. So even Bible studies, you guys, we have a lot of Bible studies within this church that you can attend if you want to try and understand the Bible a bit better. The thing, though, that kept me the most from connecting to God was the fear of being fake. I would think, um, if I don't feel like reading my Bible, then I'm being kind of disingenuous. Like, I don't want to be like, okay, God, I'm just going to read the Bible because you want me to. I I don't feel like it. I don't feel like praying right now. So I don't want to approach him in this mindset unless I feel like he wants to talk to me, unless I feel like I want to talk to him. So I just didn't want to be fake. I didn't want to feel like I had to do anything. I thought a relationship with God where I was just like, okay, it's time. I have to read my Bible. I, I, that sounded like bondage to me. That sounded like, that didn't sound like a freedom from Jesus at all. That sounded like a checklist, and it brought me back to school, which I really, really did not like. But the thing about a relationship with Jesus, about being close and connected to God, is that when he said freedom, when he said he wanted to set you free, that was free to do anything. He didn't say you are free to do whatever, but you have to read your Bible. He wants you to read your Bible so that you can connect with him. One of my favorite verses is 1 Corinthians 6.12. It was actually a memory verse that you guys didn't hear, so hopefully you remember that. But it says, I have the right to do anything you say but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. So in like today's terms, I'll be like, it's my life. I can do what I want. I can live how I want. And God's saying, you can. You can do whatever you want. But is it beneficial? Like you can spend 12 hours a day on your phone doing whatever it is you do for 12 hours a day on your phone. But is it beneficial? Are you gaining anything from that? Like, is that really good for your mental health? You can spend your time complaining about things, comparing to other people, regretting decisions that you've made, but does that benefit you? Does that make you feel better? It makes me feel worse, personally. 
You are allowed to sin. You can be mean. You can be angry. You can be lazy. You can be caught up in jealousy. But if you don't want to be a slave to anything, to me, that sounds like bondage. And that's not how I want to live. So if you are free to do whatever and Jesus has allowed you to live in freedom, why would you choose him? Why would you want to put effort towards reading your Bible, towards praying, if you don't have to? Well, this is where the title that I was going to choose, The Motivation Sucks, doesn't come into play because it doesn't always. Like, if you have the right motive, it can be a really, really empowering thing. So God's motivation to us, to discipline us, was out of love. Jesus' motivation to get up on that cross for us was also out of love. Did you guys know he didn't He didn't feel like it the night before? I don't know if that's something that we talk about a whole lot, because at Jesus, he did that. It was for our good and died for the sins of the world. But in the book of Matthew, it talks about how he was praying, like, Father, please take this cup from me. Take, um, is there any other way? Like, is there any other thing that we, he was praying so hard, you guys, he was sweating blood. His motivation to get up there, though, was out of love for us. And so I think that our motivation to read the Bible, even when we don't feel like it, even when we don't, we're not motivated, maybe we're just a procrastinator, we hold it off till later, our motivation should also be out of love. Out of love because God so loved the world, he gave Jesus. Yeah, God loved us. So because God loves me, I want to do these things. It's not, I'm going to do these things so that God loves me. See, we talk about like this Christianity, it's a relationship, it's not a religion, but we don't really know what that means. To me, a religion is I'm going to do this so that God loves me, and a relationship is God loves me, so I'm going to do this. And not only that, but I love God. Like if you have asked Jesus into your heart and you know that you have that love for God, I love God, so I'm going to do this. So I'm going to put effort towards him, even on days I don't feel like it. I know a lot of, like, the ladies. I, I love you guys, too, but the, the girls in here, we've got small group on Sunday nights. I'm not anti-boy, like, despite what you may think. I don't just, like, think I'm going to die alone. Someday I might have a boyfriend. And if I went off of that, like, I do with you. <laughs> see, you laugh. See, they, yeah, got me. <laughs> but someday I might. And if I approach that like I do God, if then it's just going to fail. If I thought, I don't feel like it. I don't want to be disingenuous. So I'm not going to be nice to my boyfriend that we're hypothetically speaking of. I'm not going to be nice to him because I don't really feel like it. What if Jesus, can you imagine if like Jesus would have been like, hey God, so that whole like you sent me here to die for the sins of the world, but I'm not really motivated. Like I don't really feel like that's what I want to do and I don't want to be disingenuous. Like, can you imagine if Jesus said that? Some of you, I don't know where you're at. Maybe you don't even know, like, motivation, discipline towards God for what? Maybe you don't even know God. Maybe this whole idea, tonight I'm kind of preaching, this message was centered around people who want to put effort towards God, don't necessarily know how, don't really feel like putting effort, but maybe you've never even taken that first step of how, how do I approach that? Like, I don't even... I don't even know God in the slightest. I could care less about reading my Bible. I was in that headspace for a while. I've heard people get up on stages and say things like, this Bible changed my life. I opened it and I could not put it down, but I opened it and like I could put it down because I just, I didn't understand it. It went way over my head when I first tried to get into it. So if you're in the room tonight, and you, don't, you might not know who Jesus is. Some of you are in this room and you do know who he is. You might even be saved. You might be walking the walk, talking the talk, doing all the God things. But you're lacking, like, the discipline to give you that real freedom to live in. You're lacking the motivation. You're not so aware of the love of God that he gave to you to put effort towards him. And if that is you, I'm going to say a prayer here soon. If you guys would, just bow your heads with me. 